Okay, guys, here's the routine for prepping for paint. Okay, these have been blasted in the blast cabinet with a very fine 50 micron aluminum oxide. And I've blown them off with 100 psi compressed air, but I've also handled them, gotten finger oil on them. I've looked at them, gotten the eyeball juice on them by looking at them too much. So, anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm slathering these with the testers thinner. And I'm using a piece of paper towel to wipe them clean. And from this point on, I don't want to touch the metal with my fingers. I just touch it by the little plastic deal here. Sorry if that was out of frame. Okay. And then the next step would be the testers, which I want to paint it with. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, sometimes you'll find these little testers bottles, especially the uh, older ones or whatever, will be difficult to open. So it's nice to have some sort of wrench. Check this out. I got this a long time ago. Back when I started modding, back in 1916, when I was modding steampunk before uh, it was cool. This is an Eiffel Floss. Eiffel Floss. So cool. Look at this thing. You pull this down, and you can change where the jaw grabs. It's got a built-in wire nipper, built-in screwdriver. You could virtually use the thing as a hammer. It's so sturdy. It's awesome. I love it. So anyway, this, or something like it, would be handy to open the paint bottles. Okay. Here's the short version of this. What you do is you take some of your paint and you take some of your thinner and you put it into the paint cap from the paint color that you want and you get it to look very very thin so that when you paint something you can see right through it and it runs and it flows really really well and then you paint your surface and you'll notice when you hit thin this sort of enamel and you're painting tiny surfaces with tiny brushes that the paint will have a capillary action and will flow all around the surface so you have to use a sparing amount of paint and the purpose of this initial application is to make the first bond between the paint and the metal. So you want it to creep into every surface and you want it to just make a tack coat. Once that dries, it'll be very sticky. It'll be almost like glue for the next layer of paint. So while it's still tacky, once it's stopped being able to, you can push it all over the place now. Every time you touch it, it'll move all over the place. It's still very fluid from the thinner. So like a uh, three drops of paint, one drop of thinner, and then this will give you a tack coat. And then you just work it. I will spare you the details of doing every single one of these on camera, but I wanted you to see how that works. So you get a tack coat so that it's on all the surfaces, and then you just set it aside and you let that get tacky. And you put on your next coat, a little bit thicker. Okay, here's a tip. After you have you know, done your paint, don't just sit there for hours with your paint open. This stuff has a very hot solvent in it and it will dry up and get thicker. And So you want to cap your paint off as quickly as possible. Once you've gotten all the paint out of your cap, get in there with a paper towel and try and clean those threads. This stuff is like glue. It's very, very sticky, very strong, has great adhesive properties to metal. The cap's metal. <laughs> it's going to want to gum up the works. And then do the same for the little edge of the bottle. Just carefully just try and wipe as much paint as possible off of it without making an even bigger mess. This stuff is sticky as heck. Okay, so, and then when you cap it up as neatly as you can, later you'll have a better chance of opening the thing without having to break out the... Uh, Eiffel floss. 
Okay, and here's another little tip. Okay, like I said, this stuff dries super fast. And so you don't want to let your brush get messed up. And the last thing you want to do is just dip your paintbrush right into your thinner. It'll turn your thinner bottle into a wash bottle and make it useless for thinning and cleaning and stuff. But you can take a little corner of a paper towel and you can put that into your thinner bottle just once. Don't put it back in there. And you can very quickly and easily clean your brush out. And that is a pro tip for how to maintain your brushes in between coats. Now, this isn't the final cleaning of the brush. Just maintain it so that it will have no paint on it, gummy it all together. And that's also when you can groom it a little bit and point it out. Can you believe this fucking guy? Can you believe it? If his fucking wife finds out what he's been doing in her fucking stove, he's Fucked! I'm telling you, he's fucked! Okay guys, I've done the uh, initial dabs of slightly thinned testers enamel on these little chips. When this was powder coated, it was all masked off and whatnot. So uh, there was a little seal between this and the temporary throwaway lids. And it just didn't make a clean seam in some places, took a little of the powder coat off. But as you can see, this even with just the initial dabs, it really cleans it up, gives it the all-white perimeter that's required. Anyway, I've taken some of the straight testers, put about two or three drops right into the cap here. And now the deal that this is no longer going to move around when I paint on it. You're going to get less capillary action. You've got to be more careful with your brush strokes. Okay, and more careful not to put too much in one place. Now, the thinner that's in the enamel will try to soften the underlying coat, which is ideal because you want good adhesion. But at the same time, it can also cause bare spots if you push too hard. And at this point, it doesn't level quite as perfectly as when it's very, very thin. So you got to work, let me get over here in the sunlight where you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay. I'm getting the paint onto the surface, trying not to push it around too much. There's usually plenty of paint on the brush. It's not like you have to keep dipping and dipping to get this to work. So what you want is to try and get a nice even coverage with none of the gray showing through this time. Okay, so you can kind of see the difference between this one and this one. And it's a gradual process. You just got to keep going back at it. And this is when you want to make sure you have a nice even coat, nothing too crazy. This is when a good brush is handy. These brushes are crap. But a nice soft sable comes to a nice point, pointed brush. Okay, so this is the effect of the second coat over the tack coat. So this is pretty much thought of as the build up coat. And if you're lucky, you can get away with maybe just one more coat over top of this to give it a nice white look. And then most likely after inserting the torx drive and socking them down, it might be necessary to touch up the very centers of them with a little sable brush at the end after it's installed. But they are definitely white instead of stainless now. Okay, and here's a super close-up of the tiny little chip area that I've been filling. This is the second coat after the tack coat on that. Starting to uh, get rid of that jagged perimeter there and I think the other problem area pretty much was just right there there's a little chipping on that hoop and I've just been dabbing away at it with the sable brush okay so here we are on to coat number three and I've already done one set of them you can start to see 
Now they're looking more and more white each time you put a little color on. And what will happen is your paint bottle stays open for extended work. It's going to get a little, paint's going to get a little bit drier as usual. It's better to work out of the cap. Okay, and what you can do is add a little thinner to that if you need it. Thinner really helps the paint flow. That's the good part. The bad part about thinner is it will eat right through the coat that's under it. So instead of covering up those dark areas, you end up burning through them, pushing the paint around places you don't want. I don't know if you can see, but that's the effect. You go from this has a little gray showing through it. And you just flow the paint. You want it to flow so that when it's done, it looks like there's no brush marks. It just flows right on there. If you're starting to see a lot of dragging, a lot of brush marks, it leaves a layer of paint and then just breaks, it doesn't flow. You should add a little drop of thinner. Okay, if I want to add the paint open here, I'd go ahead and show you how I've been dealing with the edge of this. Now, when I put the black back in after this is dried, and if the edge needs anything else, I'll just keep going after it. You know, I'm resisting the urge to go all the way around the edge with a you know a little piece of sandpaper or file or something because it's gonna make the edge just a little bit duller. This is the area where there is the chip. And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to flow the paint out to that chip because it shrinks when it dries. So I can pull it right along that low spot. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. Just the tiniest amount. Do it at a molecular level. Put a molecular level of paint on there. And that is what you're trying to do. Is just get the paint to go exactly where you want, nowhere else. There's no need for masking it off or anything, usually. Unless you have issues. It's not so much like brushing as it is touching the brush to the tiny nick and letting the paint low into the neck, which is why you have to have a little bit of thinner in the paint so that it will flow and level and shrink and then it will do what you want. I'm going to show you another little trick here. Okay. With a clean brush, dip it in the solvent okay. and right up here you should be able to see that there's a slight, slight raised area where you hold the thing level to the earth and you flow that solvent right into the lip of the area that looks like it's standing up to you. Okay. And you're going to see some magic as it melts that lip. You don't have to brush it or anything. You just get the fluid in there it will shrink up into the paint and make a perfect nice lip. And this powder coat is impervious to the salt. So you can, now that's like magic now. Now you can't even see any variation because it's just like one surface. So that's a little trick. Wow! That's some crazy shit, yeah, boy! You better not let mama catch you messing around with her stove. Lord have mercy. Alright, then I think that's enough paint and puppets for one day. You'll have to stay tuned if you want to see any more of these hijinks.